This week on Business Mike, the business of skin and hair care. My guest today is Penny Narutebembera. She's the founder of the Moisture Well, a skin and hair care business in Uganda. In this episode, Penny Narutebembera shares how she made the transition from employment in the telecommunications industry to starting her own skin and hair care business. All this and more next on Business Mike. You're listening to the Business Mike podcast. Amazing interviews with inspiring entrepreneurs. Subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher Radio for a brand new episode every Monday. For more amazing interviews, go to www.businessmike.com or sign up for our weekly newsletter by simply sending an email to subscribe at businessmike.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Business Mike. Joining me today is Penny Na. Penny Na, welcome to the show. Thank you, Daudi. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm actually very glad that you invited me. I've been listening to this podcast and they're very inspiring and I'm glad to be here and share my story. Well, why don't you start us off by telling us who you are and what you do? Well, my name is Penina. By training, I'm a telecommunications engineer. I did that for 4 years at Macquarie University, after which I did a 4-year employment contract at, with Alcatel Lucent. Uh that was till 2014 when my contract expired. And after that is when I ventured into starting a, a skin and hair range of products and I dubbed it the moisture well. Ladies will know this more than men that the number one rule to keeping your skin and hair glowing and healthy is to moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. So I got the name the moisture well. It wasn't a one day affair by the way. It was like 3 months of trying to until it clicked and you know that moment when you know yeah that's the name I want so the moisture well is pretty much your source of moisturizing needs and the the theme behind them they're all natural I've, I've been inspired by different things I love nature I find it very therapeutic I find it very relaxing so I do my the natural base of this of the products is because Mother Nature has always had solutions for our skin care and hair care without having to alter it or chemically change their composition. So I, I pretty much blend them, the, the ingredients, in their natural form without altering their composition to get these products. So I would like people who use the products to feel good as they use them, to feel nourished, to feel you know relaxed and therapeutic and because you know that because the the ingredients of the products are harmless we want you to feel safe that's very interesting actually and um i'm keen to find out how it is that you moved from telecommunications to skin and uh, hair care because that's quite a jump and if you had told me i did chemistry something something i, I might see the connection so how did you make the leap from telecommunications to skin care and this is a question of us other people actually um, i had a guest on um who has uh, skin care just like you do in nigeria and then somebody else who does makeup in kenya these are people whose backgrounds weren't necessarily in the chemistry department so when you talk about your products um it's a two part question number one is how did you make the transition and then number two what role do you play in making the stuff because i'm assuming there's some sort of chemistry involved i actually did chemistry for a a while at at school from my S1 to S6 I did PCM at a level so I I and I loved chemistry I like the you know the the process of mixing stuff and getting you know they result into other uh components but I actually have in my subconscious an undertones of of uh natural ingredients is first of all from way back I've always been the kind of person who likes if uh luxurious uh, skin products I love spas. I love I was the kind of person who if if I find maybe a Nivea product that that's good for that you know helps retain moisture then I find another one that helps do some that keeps you radiant out by both and maybe mix them so that <laughs> so to be able to get all the goodness that they're all offering. So those the, I guess those are undertones of my passion because I love that and I love uh my actually my inspiration is uh A, a range of products called uh, this Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secret. I also loved uh, uh, L'Oreal. They they have these. When you're using their products, they're very 
there's that feeling you get when you use them. So that, I guess that's, that's the undertone of where my passion lies. I, I didn't know that was a passion. <laughs> I just knew I loved doing that for myself. At the moment, I'm a one-man show, so I do everything myself. I mix the products myself. When I'm testing them, I test on myself. I test with friends, and that's as far as I've gone. I do hope to, well, I would like to follow the proper channels of the, the national channels and take them to the national bureau where they'll test it. And, and But so far, so good. The other question I wanted to ask was, um, what pushed you over the edge to actually do this as a business to say, okay, now I am doing this to make money? Yes, you've told us you have a background with uh, nature and chemistry and a certain love for this with regards to using other products that influenced you, but now doing this as a business, how did that come about? Were you solving your own problem and then other people actually said, hey, you know what, let me try your stuff and it worked and then they were offering you money or what happened? Uh, well, let's see, the chronology started from when I, you've heard of this new natural hair trend that's going around, yes. So I followed the trend. Um, it wasn't about following the trend, actually, at the time. It was about, uh, I had a problem with my, with chemically relaxing my hair. I don't know, guys normally use the phrase, my wife is going to the saloon to have her hair fright. <laughs> Those chemicals actually fry our scalps and our hair. So the problem with me is I couldn't, it wasn't healthy for me because I was literally getting wounds on my scalp. So um, I decided to shave my hair off, my relaxed hair off and start growing it naturally. And, but you see, there's not much knowledge because it's kind of like a rite of passage for girls. Once you're done with high school and you're going into, into, university, you grow your hair, Sasha, by the time you say you start, you know, you start. So no, there hasn't been much knowledge about how to groom your natural hair. Everyone just thinks it's so hard. You can't do it. It's unmanageable. It's unbearable. So I did research. I went on the internet. Oh, thank goodness for Google. There were blogs. Um, there were video blog, the vlogs with information about how you can take care of that. And they used to recommend products that were not available on our market, okay, on our Ugandan market. So for me, I had to, I had, luckily I have a sister who lives abroad. So every time I would ask her to buy for me, buy the products and then find someone, send them. And you know, you know how it is with travel. You have to find the right person coming at the right time and then plan for it and all that. So that's what I used to do. Until one time, I actually, I just looked at the ingredients on the product and in the product I used to use, I had shea butter. So I typed shea butter in Uganda. And there were supplier. It actually grows in Uganda. I was, so, I was even ashamed that I didn't know some of this information. We have shea butter in Uganda. We have cocoa butter. We have, we have avocado oil. So many things that grow in Uganda that are extracted and even, you know, packaged and distributed. And in my head, I was like, so why have I been suffering all this time? So I started to make the products for myself. It was a hobby. And when I'd make these products, I had friends who would ask, hey, the, the, when, once they saw that keeping my natural hair was not such a hassle, they were like, okay, so what do you do? What do you use? And then at first it was, you know, I'll make something for you. Here, use it. And then they'll use it. I'll be like, they'll come back and be like, ah, oh, it's helpful. Can you make another one for me? Now, it wasn't until after my employment contract ended with, tele, with uh, the, my telecommunications employer, that I decided, because I mean, at that point now I'm thinking, obviously at that stage I'm thinking I need to apply for a new job. But then I thought, how about I do, it seems there's a demand. And then the community for natural hair has just been growing and growing and growing. And you can see that ladies want products. And people have actually, because other, uh, let's say, cosmetics shops realize that natural ladies want these products from abroad, they bring them in. But I mean, by the time they get here, they're quite, pricey. So I figured why not make something using our homegrown materials. These are pretty much the active ingredients in those, <laughs> in those products that are being imported. Why not make something that's affordable, affordable for the ladies here that's you know, available and you, know, you don't have to struggle waiting for someone who's coming in three months for that. <laughs> So that, that, was, that was what pushed me to make it a business. It's incredible the similarities you have between yourself and uh, Susie Wakabi. She's the one lady I told you about earlier who does makeup in, in Kenya. It's a very, very similar story. Now, 
you 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 told me before we started the interview that you've been doing this for um just under a year are there any changes that you've experienced as an individual personally that as a business owner your eye is now keen to certain things which it wasn't before first of all i've learned that it's it, um because i was scared i have never been the kind of person that will i always thought i would just you know be employed you know improve upgrade your skills so that you just climb up the high, the 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 ranking ladder of a company but once once i decided to go into this business i'm i'm not as scared as before like i'm i have this confidence about any decision i make if it's good if it's bad if I, you know it's it's just do it i also want to help change the mentality that products that are important I'll, I'll use especially american products are the high quality you find people saying oh my product is high quality because i got it from the usa like really so if it was in and it's not high quality so we that's part of what the trend that the you know the mentality i want to get into people that it can be good if it's made from home it's good because these people come to us for our ingredients before they process them and return them to us so we just get the skills i want to get the skills make an a good enough product that will deliver results that's interesting actually that you mentioned uh, building a home brand that people can be proud of and associate with uh, high quality and be willing to pay the same amount that it pretty much would for anything from outside yeah but when it comes to pricing this is a very very tricky um topic because i've i've seen many people in different industries struggle with this especially when they are starting out because you could be a newbie in your industry but what you're making is quite good but at the same time if you price it um at the same value as it's worth because you're new people might not actually accept it because you're not known so how have you played with that you know pricing thing of okay now i don't want to make it too cheap because then they'll think ah look at the price there yeah it's probably fake or if it's too expensive that who does she think she is you've just started that kind of, how how do you strike that balance oh wow it's it's tricky it's how do i strike that balance because what i just know i price i try to be fair with my pricing okay and it's always difficult to you know to not impose but to introduce someone to something new they always have especially ugandans they don't like change <laughs> they're skeptical about change so what i do what has what i the route i've taken is it started with friends okay i, I know that it, actually that's that's actually a, a challenge i have with people they they say you find someone asking you why is your product this worth this much like why is well in our use quotation like you know in course I'll be like why is it expensive and i want to tell them <laughs> that's the value of the product i mean after everything that has gone that it has been through and and all the processes that i've taken to get this product to this point that is its value i'm not trying to you know scheme you know i'm not running a scheme where i'm going to like like rip you off or anything that is the value so what i do is um it's it's been a network that has built, built, been building such that once you use the product and realize it's giving you the results if if you notice even for yourself sometimes when you use a product it's giving you the results you want it doesn't matter the cost anymore so if i can get the product into someone's hands and they use it and we're still growing we're not as, we're saying our products are perfect because you know we get concerns i used to have concerns like with my my most famous like the the most popular product i have on my it's a hair oil it's a hair strengthening elixir people used to have concerns about like you know the scent it was a bit herbal you know very herbal cuz i mean i use natural herbs to make it so we tweak it somehow we try to make it subtle or something like like we tweak then they tell you it didn't do this so we get feedback to try and and improve on it especially if the feedback is very it's majority of the people are saying this and that and that but so far the it's positive feedback it does the results i just want to talk about something you mentioned earlier about being um, a one man show or one woman show doing everything mixing selling and all that i wanted to find out from you personally first of all what's your favorite thing to do like if you were to pick one thing something you're really passionate about within your business whereby if you actually had a team and you kept a particular department to yourself what that would be and also obviously if you're to grow you need to hire people which areas are you looking at first to try and get people in which departments are you you know concerned about uh 
Uh, I would definitely stay in the creative, if if that's a word for it, the creative department. I love, I love experimenting with scents. I love experimenting the product, testing the product afterwards, the feel. The, I like to think that a lot of people think my, like, I mean, I do collect feedback from other customers, but it starts with me. I, I feel it. And I like to think I have, you know, good taste. Like I know what a good product feels like. I know what a good product smells like. So I start with that. And I mean, like, you know, share it with people and then they'll get the feedback. So I would stay in the creative, definitely. What I would employ someone to do would be my financial books. <laughs> uh, my finances. Um, I realized that this, this is a passion and a hobby. But I mean, because I've decided to make it a business, there's more to just, you know, the technical bit of making a good quality product and what these, there are structures in there that I'm clueless about. Now, luckily, I have uh, silent partners who are a bit more business savvy than me. So at the moment, throughout the few months that we've been in operations, uh, I consult them for some of those business decisions. How do I do this? What does this mean? And things like that. But because they're not very actively involved, I, I decided I needed to do a course so that I can, you know, be able to make some executive decisions on my own. I can't always be waiting for them to get, because they're also busy. So, yeah, I, I decided to take a course at the Business Development Center. And this is what I'm learning, like that you need to get some of the different departments that one needs to consider when they're starting a business. So for now, like um, accounting, finances, definitely I need to get someone to guide me through that. Those, those numbers, I'm good with numbers, like in my head, I'm a math genius. I, I kid, I kid. No, but I, I'm good with numbers. I don't mind them, but making sense of the numbers, making decisions from those numbers. I mean, you've done this, da, 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 da. now what next? That's, I think that's a department I would hire people in, and um, I'm not a bossy person, so I would need, an, I think that would be a CEO or an MD who is strict, because I tend to be very you know, harmonious, I always want to like, you know, be peaceful with decisions, but sometimes someone needs to make those decisions that are hard for me. So, yeah, I think I would need someone there. I looked at your Facebook page and uh, I saw a post whereby all your products had been sold out. You had to make more. So basically the demand is actually there. And I wanted to know some of the tips and tricks you use to keep people coming back for your product. Um, in addition to having a, a quality product, is there anything else you do in terms of customer care or advice on how to treat their hair they do? What are some of the things that unnecessarily, here is my product, it's good, take it, you love it. What, what else do you add to that to make your, your business viable? Well, aside from the product <laughs> delivering its results, I do, I do follow, if I always follow up on my customers. Now, people who have bought directly from me, because at this stage I've reached a point, originally I used to, people used to reach out to me in person, get the product, and I'd make sure I store every number, every name of anyone who buys whatever, whether it's a lip balm, be it a body butter, be it a hair oil. So I follow up with them, okay? And I guess this helps the people realize that I show concern for my product. I don't just, it's not a one-off. I don't want you to just buy so that I make money and walk away. I need to know how has it worked for you? What problem did you have? Has it fixed that problem? Okay. And, and aside from that, I'm, I'm passionate about natural hair. Okay. So, so when people ask me, um, I, I don't just offer you the product. I give you tips on how to use it. I give you extra tips on how to, you know, care for your hair, be mindful of your habits that have caused maybe a problem that you're trying to solve. Because people ask, oh, you have a hair oil? Um, do you have a shampoo and a conditioner as well? And I'm not afraid to recommend other people. I'm like, oh, they, I don't have that yet, but you could consult so-and-so, get, get this, I recommend this, I recommend that, and it's... I guess from that, I really think people can vet you. You know, you get that gut feeling about someone and they, they know that you're passionate about. So I believe that's where people come. Some people don't even, some people call me not to get my product. They're like, I, I already have your hair oil. I'm looking for this and this and that. Like, so they're not necessarily calling me to buy a product or to purchase. They're asking for recommendations for something that I may not have. So I think that's one of the ways that has kept people 
coming back and right no, that's that's actually a good one because one of the things that you're going to teach at the BDC, which I went through this course and I interviewed Moses as well, one of the key things is uh, how you stand out from the competition because um, you must picture a scenario whereby somebody else produces a product that is of the same quality as yours. So if they are the same quality and they are the same price, what is it about your business that actually makes you stand out from them? And in most cases, it's actually that extra mile that you go and and um, you encourage to create a unique extra mile that can't easily be replicated that way people cannot necessarily you know copy your style and, and take on your client base um, you've been doing this for almost a year now and I was wondering if along the way there are any failures you had that basically taught you a lesson which you otherwise wouldn't have learned hadn't you failed so you basically this is something you've learned but it's not one of those things that someone could tell you about. Like you had to experience it to learn it. And uh, we're trying to get this from a failure perspective. I don't know if you have any like that. My failures might be a bit petty. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> at this point. In, like at this point in time, like I haven't been, it's not been in, you know, in, the business hasn't been in existence for that long. So I would say, you know, when, I don't know if you consider this a failure, but because I'm a small startup, okay, I make, I make, product in small batches okay and they were I, I wanted to at the start i wanted to make sure the batch runs out before i i make a next yeah. batch now um you find that importing now in my case i do import my packaging because um i love my country but i haven't found any <laughs> any packaging that's to my liking to my you know that my that fulfills my imagination of something that I want. So I import my packaging. So when the product, when a batch runs out and you realize, oh, either I should have sent for the next, because now I have a spell, a dry spell where people are calling in and they're so disappointed. What? You don't know when is it coming? And then you can't be sure you like shipping because, you know, the whole shipping process and it's so it's i think it's the logistics bit of it that i've i've struggled with and i'm i'm still trying to i haven't yet overcome that but i'm trying to find a way in which i can keep it like continuously flowing so that i don't have a month of so you see now i've been in operations for like 7 months but in active operations it's probably 5 months because i've had like 2 months of dry spell waiting for this to come waiting for the other to arrive and things like that but i we're working on a solution for that I don't know if that's a failure. <laughs> well, I wouldn't necessarily call it a failure per se, but it, it's def definitely... Um, Give me an example of a failure, a failure. for some, someone, like a random failure that someone else has oh, experienced okay. and see if I can relate. Okay, well, I'll tell you from, from, from my own perspective. Um, a few years ago, I studied a movie library. Actually, you know about this because you'd, you'd, you'd occasionally come to visit. And a failure I learned from that that I, I still appreciate till now is this particular urge to build a big brand before you actually reach that level because time and again you'll see people telling you you know start small and then build slowly now when i started my movie library I, I thought to myself well it's going to be the first movie library that people can order online we have to make sure our branding is good the packaging has to be on point we have to rent in a nice reputable place so that when people come they can see the value and so on and so forth so i ended up sinking a lot of money on the the look of the brand um, in terms of the rent, in terms of the quality of the packaging and all that. But I hadn't factored in simple things like, you know, how many people buy the movies? You know, how much would I make in a month in terms of profit? The money I spend on the branding and rent, does it make sense to price the movies at this particular price? If they're more expensive, will people buy them? Because if there's a similar quality city downtown, why would anyone come? And so that was a failure that I learned. Until today, I, I don't think... Any amount of people would have told me that and I would have grasped it. I had to go through it to appreciate it. That, that's, that's an example for me. I don't know. Has anything come to mind? I think I had to brag, but I guess I haven't had any failures because I've really tried. I haven't pushed myself that. Like, I have ambitions. I mean, in my head, I have ambitions. And I know where I want. I, I know the look. I know the... I have a vision of what I want the moisture world to be like. But I started making them from my kitchen counter. I didn't hire a workshop space to start doing this. So my kitchen counter, and there's going to reach a point where I'll need to get the space. I mean, the capacity. When, when, when 
making these products. I mean, I didn't, I didn't go buy the machinery, you know, the high, cl- and that's usually, you need the high and like high capacity when you're making thousands of units. But I started making batches of like 50 units, you know, just in tens of units. So I'd use, I turned my kitchen counter, my utensils, that was, this was now where I started from. So I think because I've started small, Maybe I haven't. I th- guess the smaller you are, the the le- like the smaller the yeah. the level of failures. And as I grow, I'm, I'm, wh- what I do know is that it's never a failure. It's always a lesson. Um, what advice would you give anyone that wants to actually go into this business? And uh, how can you contrast your experience in the business world in courts versus uh, you know your employment career? Like. How would you weigh the two? Which do you prefer and so on? Uh, I'll start with the second question. Ah, uh, I can't tell you how overjoyed I am that I... No, the, <laughs> no I, it's... It, the entrepreneurship has made me creative, okay? Um, when, I, when I did telecom, the reason I did telecommunications engineering was because... I watched a lot of TV, <laughs> and I wanted to be that, that CSI person, yeah. and, you know, that, that yeah. narrows down yeah, on yeah. the <laughs> terrorist, catches them like that here, you know. For, uh, so that was what I wanted. Like, I was so, I, I thought that my telecommunications journey would be that way. But then it turns out, I, I reached a point where it was, it was monotonous. It got the, the roles and the, and the, my roles and, responsibilities were monotonous, monotonous, monotonous. So I, I got bored along the way. And I felt it wasn't fulfilling anymore. So I still love telecoms. Like, I love telecom. I still read up on, like, you know, telecommunications blogs and find out the latest, you know, gadgets, the latest networks, the latest technology. And it's still in my head. But now I'm doing, doing this has helped me be creative like i'm creative i'm always thinking ah oh, what would i like what would i do and then i try to make it that's actually what inspired toffee because i was eating a toffee one day and i was like hmm it'd be nice to have a lip balm that tastes like and smells like toffee so i went out and made a toffee lip balm and so it helps me to be creative and of course i'm scared about you know people always warn you you know business is tough you don't get all your money at once i mean it's not like employment where you know it's routine it's guaranteed it will be there but i've been told there'll be bouts of you know spells and then, uh. so uh, i'm not scared of that i guess i'm not worried i have a good support system around me my my family they they, they were skeptical i don't get me wrong they were worried they're like oh my goodness but it it's i think it also helps that i don't have dependents yeah. I think it was also easy to make that decision because I don't have like I don't have children, I don't have a family to take care of or things like that. So this is the final question and it's actually my favorite question is if you were cast away to a desert island but you're allowed only one of each, which book would you take with you? Which uh, movie would you take with you and what song? I would take the Avengers. I I love those movies. Like they, I watch them every day. All the like I rewatch and rewatch and rewatch. they have such and the tones of humor that are really funny and, and it's an action and I love superheroes and things like that. Um, the novel, A Song of Ice and Fire, like the Game of Thrones entire, I would read that forever and I'll just take that entire one book of collection, uh, story collections and take that. My song, ah, oh, I love Adventure of a Lifetime, Coldplay. That's oh. my hype song every day now. Like, like I would. In fact, and you know what's funny? If I were, you said if I were cast away on a, on a desert, desert island, island. Yes. like what's not to like about adventure? Have you seen that video? Like the gorillas jumping and dancing, and yeah, I think yeah, that's the song I would take. <laughs> okay. You mentioned the song of ice and fire. Actually, today I finished reading a particular book that blew my mind, and uh, when it was recommended to me, the person said this is the best time travel story ever like you know you've watched back to the future i don't know the terminator and all these a time traveler's wife all that stuff this is hands down the best time travel story ever now i was skeptic i was like what what do you mean how come i haven't heard of it and it was written in 1986 it's called replay by ken grimsworth and if you have the opportunity to read or listen to the audiobook i listened to the audiobook it is an amazing story i have 
I've seen many interpretations of time travel and stuff, but this this is unique. And to think it was written in 1986. How did we miss that? Yeah, yeah. Someone should make a movie. I like when people transform um, movies. Into- <laughs> I don't want them to ruin my experience of the book. Right, but yeah, that's so we're at the end of the interview, and thank you so much, Penina. Um, you're, a bit, you're a bit hesitant to do the interview because you are fresh into the entrepreneurial world, but thank you so much for being brave and doing this interview. Um, how can people learn more about your product? Because I'm sure there are people who want to you know, get in touch with you and buy the product. And uh, do you have a website? If not, please get a website so people can order online and you know, get your product. Yes, we do have social media accounts. We have The Moisture Well on Facebook. Uh, Twitter is at The Moisture Well. We're, more acti- we're most active on Facebook and Instagram also. Um, at, uh, do we use at on Instagram? Yeah. All right. The Moisture Well. <laughs> the Moisture Well. Yeah, that's Instagram. Um, we don't have a website yet because I want to build my content. I do not, personally, I don't like when I go to a website and it's blank. Like, like I have nothing to browse through. So I'm building on my content, okay, so that we'll probably even have a blog there. We'll have a review section where people can come in and um and we always tell people my when find uh, um, there's nothing more important to me than feedback of any kind. Don't hold back on the feedback of our order of our products, how you found them, what, what how they worked for you, if they if they did anything for you or if they were just blessed, still, just let us know. <laughs> if they get onto those platforms and find our pages, all the information is there, how you can get it. We offer a delivery service, so if you need that, pro- we can arrange that for you as well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Penina, for joining us today. I appreciate um, you coming onto the show and sharing your experience. I hope the listeners have actually learned something and for those planning to get into a business maybe this will tip them over the edge having had your story so thanks once again and wish you the very best with the don't master. forget to call me back in three years time because <laughs> you see you've got me at the start so a few years maybe one or two like you know after i've gotten this thing down <laughs> we'll, have we'll have this conversation and somewhere. i'll tell you i'll tell you how i've improved <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Business Mike podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to listen to more episodes just like this one, simply go to businessmike.com. I would love to hear from you. So if you've got any questions or feedback, you can reach me on Twitter at Daudi Mugabe, on Facebook at Business Mike, or email that's Daudi at businessmike.com. Don't forget, we have a brand new episode every Monday. And until then, take care.